Today's video is going to be a follow-up to an earlier video I did where I made a package build file. So if you haven't seen that video or you don't know how to make a package build, be sure to go check that one out first. It'll be up on that corner up there. So what we're going to be doing today is taking this package build file as well as a couple of extra files and then submitting it to the AUR. So to do this, we're going to need a couple of different things. The first thing we're going to need is an AUR account. The second thing we're going to need is a pair of SSH keys. And the third thing we're going to need is obviously the package build. Before you go and submit anything to the AUR, make sure you go and read through the guidelines and the rules of submission. So the guidelines are just the best practices. So things like what order the variable should be in, what order the function should be in, how to do commenting, how to list out the contributors and the maintainers, things like this. So things that won't get your package pulled down, but will just make it so it lines up with everything else in the AUR. Now, as for the rules, if you break any of the rules, this could get your package pulled down. So make sure you go and understand what you actually have to do. So I'm going to go through the rules now, but I would recommend going and reading them for yourself just so you have a proper understanding of them. So the first thing is don't build any applications that are in the official repositories. So for example, don't make an AUR package for the latest stable version of Vim. But there is an exception to this rule. So let's say you have something like Ranger. Ranger is a terminal file manager. It's in the official repos. But let's say in the AUR you wanted to submit something like Ranger, but it has tiling. This would be okay because the official version of Ranger doesn't actually have tiling support. So if you made an AUR package and called it something like Ranger tiling, that would be okay. But if you just took the stable version of Ranger and then put that into the AUR as well, that wouldn't be okay. The reason for this is because it would be a bit confusing because if you have the AUR version and the stable version, which version should someone actually use? The next one is don't submit any packages that already exist within the AUR. So for example, LF is in the AUR, but let's say the LF package stopped being maintained and you wanted to then submit a new LF package. Well, don't do that. What you should do is transfer ownership of that unmaintained package to yourself, which can be done through the web interface for the AUR. The next thing is make sure that your package is actually useful. The AUR doesn't exist for you to back up your files. So if it's something that only you will ever use, then that doesn't belong on the AUR. But if it's something like, I don't know, some little script that maybe four or five people will use. If more people than just yourself are going to use it, it's okay to be on the AUR. It's not like there's a hard limit of like a hundred people have to use it. As long as more people than just yourself are using it, it's allowed to be on the AUR. Make sure that if you're going to be using the replaces variable, that this package actually renames another package. If it's just going to be conflicting with another package, then use the conflicts variable. So for example, let's say you have two init systems. So these would be conflicting with each other, but they wouldn't be renaming each other. So an example of renaming would be, let's go back with Ranger. Let's say you want to change the name of Ranger so it's now Ranger without the A's and without the E's. That would be okay to be using the replaces variable because in this case, this package is renaming an older package. Any packages that are going to install a pre-built binary should have their name suffixed with dash bin. Now I've done a full dedicated video talking about what dash git and dash bin mean and all of the other different extensions you can have for a package name. So feel free to go check that one out. But the general idea is dash git should be used for anything that is building directly from a repo that isn't using a tagged release. It's just building whatever the newest thing on that branch is. If it doesn't have a suffix, this should be a stable release. So for example, Brave 1.0, Brave 2.0, that would be a stable release. And then dash bin should be for any pre-built binaries. When you submit your AUR package, it shouldn't actually include the package file. The package file should be getting generated from the source that you're actually downloading from. And the last thing is at the top of your package build file, what you should do is mention who the contributors and who the maintainers are. So the form that's in is going to be as a comment. And then you say maintainer colon, then whoever the name is. So in my case, that would be Brody Robertson. And then in here, you just put the email for that person. And then for any people who aren't maintainers, but who may have contributed something to the AUR package, so that's to the actual package itself, not for the program, you would list those people as contributors. So maybe they, I don't know, tell you about some missing dependencies or things like that, but they're not actually helping to maintain the package. Those people would just be listed as contributors. So you would just say who the contributor is and then what their email is. 
Okay, so now that that's out of the way, I would really, really recommend going back and looking at the Arch Linux wiki and actually reading all of the rules for yourself. I feel like I did a pretty solid rundown of them, but I might have missed something, and I want to make sure that if you're going to be submitting anything to the AUR, that you have a good understanding about what you actually need to do. So go read the Arch Linux wiki and make sure that you actually have a good understanding of the rules before you go ahead and do anything else. But assuming that you've read the rules and that you understand them well enough, the first thing we're going to need to do if we want to submit to the AUR is actually make an AUR account. So what you're going to have to do is come over to the AUR website and then click on the register button up here. And the registration process is pretty simple for the AUR. All you have to do is put in a username and an email address and the rest of the stuff in here is completely optional except for this part right here. So if we want to be submitting to the AUR, what we're going to need to do is have an SSH public key that we can give to the AUR. If you've never used SSH before, you won't have a .SSH folder, which is where all of your SSH configuration should be located, so that should be the first thing you go ahead and do. But I've already made that folder earlier, so what we're going to do is just CD into that folder, and as you can see, I've got a couple of different files in here. So I've got an AUR file, an AUR.pub file, a config file, and this other file here is just being generated by SSH, so don't even worry about this file. So the AUR file that I've got here is my private key, the AUR.pub file is my public key, and then let's have a look at the config file. So in here, as you can see, it says who the host is. So the host in this case is AUR.ArtsLinux.org. So that's what we're going to be connecting to. And then the identity file is the file that contains our private key, and then you also have to say who the user is going to be. So I'm just saying that my user is AUR. Now, I would recommend just copying exactly what I've done here, just so it'll be a bit easier to follow along with. And what you're going to need to do is actually generate your pair of keys. So to do that, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is run ssh-keygen-f, and then say where you want it to be located. So in this case, I'm just going to be saving it right here. Now, I'm not going to rerun this because that'll break my ability to use the AUR, but if you've never run this before, what this is going to do is generate a private key and generate a public key. So never share your private keys with anyone because that basically will break your encryption. But feel free to share the public key with any services that you want to be using. So in this case, that would mean copying the contents of the AUR.pub file into this spot right here. So just copy everything that's in that file and just dump it in here. And if you want to be able to connect to the AUR from multiple different computers, then you can have multiple public keys in here as well. So if you want to have it on your laptop and on your desktop and on your work computer, then you can add multiple public keys in here and it will work perfectly fine. So once you've added that in, feel free to go ahead and just finish the account creation process. If you've already got an AUR account and you didn't put in a public key, you can actually go and modify your account settings and put a public key in. So don't worry about that if you already have an AUR account, it's not like you have to go and create a new one. Okay, so now that we have our SSH key pair and we have our AUR account, what we're going to need to do is actually get the repo ready. So what we're going to do is, let's just go back into my home directory and run git clone ssh colon slash slash, then the name of the user, so in this case AUR, at aur.archlinux.org slash the name of the package that we're going to have. So in this case, I'm just going to do test-repo.git. And if we run this, if we set up an SSH passphrase, it's going to ask for that. So I'm just going to cut ahead to when that's done. And as you can see, it says, warning, you appear to have cloned an empty repository. So that means that we've actually successfully made that. At this stage, no changes have actually been made to the AUR. So you can do whatever you want to this folder. It's just a regular Git repo and nothing is going to change until you go and push it back up to the AUR. Now, if you have an existing repo, what you can do is just add a new remote like you would with any other sort of Git repo. So what you would do is do Git remote, add the name of the new origin. So in this case, let's just call it origin2 and then the URL for the origin. So ssh colon slash slash the user, so AUR at dot arch linux dot dot org slash the name of the package. So in this case, we're going to call it test dash repo dot git. And then that will just add a new remote to your existing repo. And likewise, if you name the package the wrong thing, you don't have to delete the folder. What you can do is just change where the remote is pointing to. 
Okay, so now that all of that's set up, the next thing we're going to need to do is make sure that our package build is definitely ready to go onto the AUR. And the first thing I'd recommend doing for that is looking at your dependency list. So in here, I've got a package build file. So this is for something that actually is available on the AUR right now that I end up writing myself. So this is my dependency list. So we have things like glib2, glibc, zlib, and a couple of other things in here as well. So if you know anything about Arch Linux, you would know that glibc gets installed when you're actually setting up your system. So you don't necessarily need glibc to be in there, but the reason why I've included it is just in case it ever gets removed from the base set of packages. This package still needs glibc regardless of whether it's in the base set or not. So I would recommend even including dependencies that even a base Arch Linux install should have, just in case they do ever get removed. Now, the other thing about dependencies is you should never rely on transitive dependencies. So let's say we have a one, we have two, and we have three. And package one is the AUR package that you're writing. And one relies on two and it also relies on three. But in your dependency list, you only have package two listed because you know that package two will also download package three. Now, this isn't something that you should ever do. If you need package two and package three to run package one, what you should do is have them both explicitly listed just in case package two ever stops needing package three. This is just to make sure that your dependencies will always be downloaded correctly, regardless of what any of your other dependencies actually download. And one way you can find out which dependencies you have, or at least specifically what libraries you're dependent on, is by running a program by the name of LDD. So what we're going to do is first actually compile the package. So I'll just run make package in here, and what it's going to do is download the source code and then compile the package, but not actually go and install it. So as we can see in here, we have a couple of extra files now, and what we're going to be doing is going into the src directory, so that's the source directory, and we're going to be going into the tiramisu folder, and as you can see in here, I've got this executable right here, and it's listed as an ELF file. So LDD will work on any of these ELF files and will tell you what libraries you're actually calling from this application. So if we run LDD and we pass in tiramisu, as you can see, we're calling things like Linux VDSO, we're calling libgeo, libgobject, libglib, libpthread, so on and so forth. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to run pacman-f and then pass in the path to wherever this library is located. So in this case, this one is located in user slash lib slash libgeo and then the rest of this name here. And this is being provided by the glib package. So let's try out something else. So let's try it out with this one right here and see which one is providing this. So pacman-f and this one is being provided by glibc. And the other thing we can do, which I briefly touched on in my first video, is by running a program by the name of NAMCAP. So NAMCAP will basically let you, I guess, sanity check your package build and sanity check your files. So what we're going to do is run sudo pacman-s, and we're going to install NAMCAP. So let's go back to the root of this directory, and then run this on the package build file. So NAMCAP on the package build, and as we can see, we get no results back, so that means basically good. If you get no results back, that's a good thing. But if we run it on the tarball, that is the actual package, I'll get a few results back. And some of them aren't necessarily bad things. So both of these are saying that they're unused library by the binary, but that's because they're being imported by the application, even though they're not being used. So it's just because the application was written weirdly. And the rest of these, so glibc, zlib, these are basically just because they are dependencies that come with your Arch Linux system. It doesn't hurt to include them. So if you want to include them, it's fine. If you don't want to, that's fine as well. But make sure that for things that aren't installed with your base system, those actually are being included as dependencies. And this other one in here is basically just saying that when you install the package, it's not actually downloading the license along with the application. This is something that I actually should go and fix, but I'll do that off camera. Now, assuming you don't have any problems with NAMCAP like I do, as I said, we'll fix this, but assuming you don't have any errors, now we can actually get to the point where we're going to push it onto the AUR. So the first thing I would recommend doing, and the Arch Linux Wiki recommends this as well, is making a very, very basic git ignore. Now this git ignore file isn't going to be pushed up to the AUR. It's basically just gonna make it easier to work with git locally. So what we're gonna do is add a git ignore file, and it's just gonna have one line in it. All it's gonna have is asterisks. 
So that means we're going to ignore every single file. And the reason why we do this is because in the AUR you want to have a very, very specific set of files. So if we ignore everything and then only force in the files that we want to have in there, so in this case, it's going to be two files. It's going to be the dot source info and it's going to be the package build. By having the git ignore set up like this, we have to explicitly say, okay, we are only going to commit these files. We can't just go and commit random other files. These are the only ones that we want to be committed. It just makes sure that you don't end up cluttering up your AUR package. Okay, so now that you've done that, we're going to go through the steps of what you have to do every single time you push an update to the AUR. So this is for the first update and every consecutive update. So what you have to do is run a make package dash dash print src info. So we're going to print the source info of the package and we're going to redirect that into src info. Make sure that is also preceded with a dot. And we run that and if we have a look in here, we'll see that the source info basically just says a basically description of the package. So what the name of the package is, the package description, package version, so on and so forth. Okay, so now that that's done, what you're going to do is do git add dash f. So we're going to say we're going to force some packages to be committed by git even though they're being ignored by the git ignore. And we're going to add the package build and we're going to add the dot src info. Okay, so we've added those. And then what we have to do is make a new commit. So git commit dash m and then give it some sort of useful commit message. So if this is your first commit, it would be fine to call it something like creating initial AUR package or something like that. But then for the ones after that, call it something like adding this dependency, adding that dependency, fixing this bug, fixing that bug. Just so that when people look through the git log, they can actually see when stuff was fixed. So if there was something that broke between updates, they can tell you about it or you can spot it yourself. And then what you're going to do after that is just do git push. And that is all you do. Now, if this is an update to a pre-existing package, make sure you also go and update the package version or the package rel. So the package version is the version number of the application. If it is a dash git package, that should be getting updated by the package of a function. But if this is for a stable release, make sure you actually go and manually update the package version. And the package rel is when you actually update the package itself. So say you have some missing dependencies. All of that stuff would be a reason to update the package rel. So with the package rel, that should be an integer that always ticks up. The package version number doesn't necessarily have to be an integer. But it does have to be a value that when compared with an older value has to be higher. And once that's done, what you can do is go back over to the AUR website. And what you're going to see is in your account page, it should actually have the package listed as one of your packages. So in my case, I've just got tiramisu-git. And if you pushed up your package correctly, it should be listed on the AUR within a, at least a couple of minutes. So I hope that clears up some confusion around submitting stuff to the AUR. It's actually not a difficult process whatsoever. It's actually really, really easy. Pretty much all you have to do, make the package build, make the source info, add stuff to a Git repo, push it up to a Git repo. And that's all you have to do now. Now, obviously, when it comes to actually maintaining a package and making sure the application continues to work, there's a little bit more you have to do. And I might do a third video talking about claiming orphan packages and bringing an old package back to life. But for now, I think this should get you started with how to actually submit something to the AUR, whether that be your application or in the case of Tiramisu, someone else's application that you think is really cool. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Monsters, Peter Peter, the Road, Tony Donald, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links we can buy the gear in this channel, or anything else you want, and a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel, also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.